Good morning. I've had a golf lesson. And I practiced properly after the lesson. Oh dear, he's just gone OB on 18. Now when you've had a golf lesson, you can get stuck between two stools, the old way and the new way. And you can't do either one. So you have to manage yourself until the second lesson and the third lesson and you get better at what you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing, as you get closer to the way that you really want to swing the club. And to show you how much it mucks you up, I've warmed up, I got the shanks. Yeah, so my first iron shot, I'm gonna be afraid to hit it. Ack, ack, ack. No, no. no. I might have a shot down there. Well, I didn't shank it. Perhaps that's the answer. Hit it in the trees. My goodness, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, good grief, it almost pitched in a hole. Now you may have noticed the greenkeepers have been out this week, it's been dry. They've spent four days mowing. And we're on the full length tee, so the score from last week really doesn't mean anything. This will be my first score. Stay up, stay up, stay up. Oh. Yeah, I didn't hit it hard enough. Now the thing with golf lessons is you've got to manage expectations. You know, one lesson isn't going to turn your 17 handicap into Scotty Scheffler, is it, overnight? And yet how many people do you know who went for a lesson, never practiced, went straight to the tee, played awful, and then said, the pro's an idiot, I'm never having a golf lesson again. And 10 years later, there's still a 17 handicap. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in one lesson. And it's not going to happen without practice. Oh. That's reached the lay landing. I'm going to need another ball. So as I say, it's going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. It was quite easy to see where my shanks are coming from. That swing path was awful. Slow down. Well, it's not pretty, but it's usable. I'll go have a look for that first one in a mow. So there you see, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight. This is gonna take six weeks, eight weeks. Well, at least I've thinned it in the right direction. How do you thin a ball that's above your feet? Could have been better. Let's whip the flag out. Let that single through has come up behind me. The trouble with the camera is it slows me down and then people catch you and then I play worse when I'm being pushed. So it's always best to get out of the way. Then I can slow down and score better. and promptly shoved it out to the right. Oh, 
Oh dear, that's right. Well, that's another I didn't shank. Right, I got a chance from there. The one thing I take away from this video is how long it's taking me to hit the golf ball. I'm having to think about everything. There's no autopilot at all. Well, it's on. Just a little shy, just a little behind the ball. Now you might ask, why on earth have I done this to myself? It's obviously a lot worse than I'm struggling. But if you'd seen me pinging golf balls in the studio, under supervision, under lesson condition, you would know exactly why I was doing this. Because it's the only way that I can get back. That didn't come, did it? It's the only way I can get back to shooting five or six over. I have to remember, having five months off. Well, it's much better being on the full length tees. Gives me a better idea of how I'm playing. Four iron. All I've got to do now is think about those four irons I hit on holiday. There you go. Five yard fade. Got some height on it, middle of the fairway. Perhaps I needed to warm up more before I came out. It's right and it's gonna be bunker. Damn it. Uh, five or six feet past would suit me fine. Remember to get your toes in, not just the heels. Slow and short. Well, I'm going to take a big dose of luck there. So one of the things I'm working on with James is squaring up my shoulders. They were open. Trouble is when you have a lesson, is sometimes you go too far. Instead of taking the aspirin and squaring up your shoulders, you swallow the whole bottle and then your shoulders are closed. This is why lessons are in plural. Because you can always swallow the whole bottle instead of taking the one aspirin that you've been given. I made a par, goodness sake. Whatever next. This is a four iron up the hill. The microphone just switched off on me, so I spent the rest of this round talking to myself. I've hit a nice fade into the back of the green. Now the north wind today is rather cruel. I've not played in a north wind on this course. And it does get into my bones later on. Now I hit this reasonably well, but it went absolutely nowhere. Again, north wind. This fairway is rather narrow, so I was quite happy to hit it. And you might wonder why are you persisting with driver when you're obviously struggling. Well, I've got to find out what I'm doing with it and try and sort out my swing path. <laughs> yeah, baby. Harry Golf has come to play. Six iron and the wind is off the left. You can see how far left I'm aiming here. I'm aiming outside of the green in order to hit it. And I'm very glad I went with a six. 
because I ended up pin high. Flag is down the front of the green today. I haven't played it here before, I don't think. But you can see the hedgerow on there behind me. If you miss this green to the right. Longest par four on the course. Something tells me I'm not getting home in two today against the wind. Well, I'm still in summer mode. So this is short. I was expecting this to really run away and it didn't even get down to the flag. I expect in a few weeks it'll be quicker. You kind of like dolly that, didn't you? You were afraid it was going a mile past. But I could sit here all day and just listen to the bird song. Who needs to play golf when you're on a piece of real estate like this? I can only see the front left of the green, so that's the bit I'm going to aim at. I'm certainly not good enough that's not what I wanted. to turn this to the right and get it up the green. You see how this round is being held together with the wedge and the putter. If I didn't have a short game, you could probably double how much I'm over par. Now we go to the 10th, short par 4. This is a lot of fun. I take driver, and I always will take driver up here. I want to get as close as I can. Give myself the best chance of a birdie. Well, that's a bit dodgy. I haven't been over there before. I know it opens out, but when you can't see the ball land, you're always worried. And that's just horrible. And I think it's, it's just the cold. It is so cold today. Despite the sunshine, that north wind is an absolute killer. I've landed on the downslope there. It was the wrong club. What I needed to do was to fly that onto the flat a bit. But by landing on the downslope, I've run through the back. And again, you know, the short game is saving me when I make these mistakes. I'm either getting a par out of it or, in this case, a bogey. Yeah, next time I'm short of this green. Short 12th, just the three hybrid up here. I don't really need to get any closer. And it certainly makes life easier putting some loft in your hand when a hole is this narrow. Nine iron up the hill, the flag is on the far right. Let's see if I can just turn this nine iron towards it. Well, that's spot on. Where did we get up there? That looked very tidy. Flag is front right next to the bunker. I want nothing to do with it. But I hit one of those shots that I'm desperately trying to get rid of. Where you wipe across the ball and you hit it weak and high. And in the bunker. And 
please don't ask me what happened to this. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's... It, even the short game's a bit of a mess. But it is saving me shots. Getting it down inside that three or four feet and tidying up. With the north wind, this hole is playing very long. As it's so far downhill, I thought I'd try seven. I've caught it a little thin, and I missed in the one place you cannot possibly miss. And that's short right. I'm not sure what possessed me to pick a seven iron. Perhaps if I was playing really well. Again, another one of those shots where I'm downhill and I chickened out with the chipping, so this time it has cost me a bogey. Then we go to the prettiest hole on the course, the par 3. And again, another one of those shots where you wipe across it, add loft and hit a weak shot. i, I really got to get rid of this shot. Despite the driver being awful and the longer clubs being awful, if I could get rid of that shot, then I'd be in a whole lot better place. All this is, is going to take time. It's going to take several lessons. It's going to take a lot of practice. This week has been wet again, so I haven't practiced. One of the narrowest fairways I know. In fact, I think this is the narrowest fairway I know. Hybrid up the hill. At least I can hit the hybrid decent. I'm not going to resort to it as a tee club. I'm going to keep going with driver and three wood. But at least I can move it a good distance. That was missing on the left edge and it's, it's caught that slope, it's kicked it in. Yeah, just explaining how I got a member's bounce there. Because you don't want to miss this green on that side, because you go down into a trench. Putt almost came back. I'll take a par up here any day of the week. Second shot in, fairly simple. Well, I've got to be careful about going past this flag because of the green. And this one comes back off the front. So it's down to the short game yet again to save my score. Look how much borrows on that little chip. So the short game really is important because it's holding me together. Now the bizarre thing is, is when I start striking the ball better, I've got more swing speed, then things are going to get worse perhaps, because then I'll be able to hit the ball far enough to actually lose it. Cheerio.